Do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? Do you know what you're supposed to be doing here on this earth? You know, we are just passing through. We are pilgrims passing through. And there is only a certain time period in, and for each one of us here on this earth. So we are to be about the Father's business. And we are to know what our purpose is and what our destiny uh, is. Uh, this is the message today. So thank you for viewing and watching and making your comments. Let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with thanksgiving in my heart. I come to you with humility in my heart, Lord, knowing that you are the great creator, knowing you are the great I am and that you live on the inside of me, and that you're going to show each one of us today who we are in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for this time. I thank you for this uh, season where we can uh, just bring forth the Word of God. Uh, and I thank you for the viewers. I thank you for everyone uh, that is listening or viewing this video. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way in this session today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There are three areas that I want you to consider today. One is how does this revelation process take place? One is by hearing the voice of the Lord. The second one is finding yourself in the Word of God. And the third is being led by the Spirit of God. Let's go over those again. Number one is about hearing the voice of the Lord. Number two is finding yourself in the Word of God. And number three is being led by the Spirit of God. You know, there are people out there, they, they know what they're supposed to be doing, uh, but they're not obedient. You know, and then they find themselves in the, in the, in the fish's belly. Just like Jonah. Well, let's talk about some individuals that heard the voice of the Lord and they were obedient to what God wanted them to do and it brought forth their purpose and their destiny. Woo! Hallelujah! So hearing the voice of the Lord is extremely important. In John 10, verses 3 and 4, it says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his sheep out, he goes on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. It is so very important, critical. If you want to know your purpose and destiny, if you want to know what who you are in Christ Jesus, it's so very important to hear the voice of the Lord. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to hear from the Lord. And I went to um, a ministry, and I, I went up after the session was over with, and I asked the minister, I said, I want to hear the voice of the Lord. How can I do that? And this is what the minister told me. Every single day, as many times as I wanted to speak it out, I was to speak out John chapter 10, that I was one of his sheep, and I heard his voice, and a strange voice I would not follow. He says, speak that out over and over and over again. And I did. I, I came home and every day and several times a day, I would, I would say that out of my mouth because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I would speak that scripture out over and over again. Now, there may be other ways uh, that you can train your spiritual ear to hear the voice of the Lord. But that is a very effective way and it worked with me because I got that scripture down in my spirit man and when I got it down when I when it went from my mind down to my spirit it exploded it exploded 
And I began to hear what the Lord would say to me. And then I began to ask for assignments to, to prove and to test that I was hearing his voice. And so one assignment was that uh, the pastor uh, and his wife that we were under their covering and, and, and teaching, uh, they would come to, they didn't live here in our town, but they would come to the hospital here to visit people or people would call them and they would come and I knew that, that they, periodically, they would come here to the town where I lived to go to the hospital, to, to visit people. And so I said, Lord, the next time Brother JC and Sister Mildred come to this town, to the hospital, speak to me. And I will go right then to the hospital. Well, I had finished supper and I was uh, cleaning up the, the kitchen. And all of a sudden, I heard they're on their way. And so I took off my apron and I asked my husband to watch the children. And I got in the car and I drove to the hospital. And I was waiting in the parking lot and here comes their vehicle. And they get out of their vehicle and start walking up the sidewalk to the front door of the hospital. I got out of my vehicle and here I was right behind them. And he turned around and he smiled at me and he said, you're learning. So after we, we can prove and test the voice of the Lord. And that we're hearing correctly. I'll give you another example. Because I, I, after that went so well, then I said, Lord, you know, uh, send me on another assignment. Let me hear where I'm supposed to go, who I'm supposed to speak to. And so I was here at home and, and I heard from the Lord, go and buy a dozen roses. I thought, okay. So I went to the store. I bought a dozen roses. I said, okay, here's the roses. He said, now I want you to go to the hospital. Go to the third floor of the hospital. So I did. I went to the hospital. He told me which hospital. We had two hospitals. He told me which hospital. He told me to go to the third floor to the nurse's station. And he, then he told me the room number. He says, ask for this room number. And I did. And I went to that room and I opened up the door. Here I have my dozen roses. And when I opened the door, this elderly woman sits up in the hospital bed and she says, oh Jesus, you brought me flowers. Oh Jesus, you brought me flowers. I will never forget that situation. I will never forget that assignment. Not only did it prove that I was hearing the voice of the Lord, but it also was such a blessing, a joy to me and a joy to this woman. And she didn't see me. She saw the Lord. And so you see, when we hear the voice of the Lord... We are fulfilling purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. Think about Noah in Genesis 6.13. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to the people, all the people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. And do you know that he told Noah the the, to build an ark, to build a big boat, that it was going to rain. He just kept speaking uh, to Noah, and Noah was obedient. He told him uh, the dimensions of the boat. He told him, bring the animals two by two, get your family in. Oh, he's, he said all of these things to Noah, and Noah listened 
and obeyed. That's so very, very important. Hallelujah. So, this was part of Noah's purpose and destiny. It had never rained on the earth. And he was persecuted and he was laughed at and he was mocked. But for 40 days and 40 nights it rained and it destroyed everything that was on the earth. Except for Noah and his family and the animals that he took on board. So I'm telling you, listen to the voice of the Lord. You know, then you think about Moses. Moses in Exodus 3 verses 4 and 5. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look at what? The burning bush. God called him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. Woo! Hallelujah. And Moses said, here I am. Hallelujah. When you hear the voice of the Lord say, here I am. Speak to me. I'm listening to you. Hallelujah. Did you know that we are spiritual beings out here in the, in, in the earth? We have a, a, I call it our, our earth suit on. But who are we? We are spirit. Ooh, hallelujah. I love that. And we hear the spirit of God. We hear from the voice of God through our spirit. Hallelujah. And God says, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And that's what Moses did. But what did Moses find out? Right there, God began to share with him that he was going to be a deliverer. He was going to be sent, you know, back to Egypt to bring the people out of Egypt, out of bondage. Woo! Hallelujah! Don't you want to know your purpose today? Don't you want to know that you have more to do than just sit on the couch and do nothing? Woo! Hallelujah! And then... We go to Judges, Judges 6, 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Hallelujah. Right there, he said to Gideon, This is who you are. This is who you are. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. You are a mighty warrior. And then in 1 Samuel 3 and 4, 1 Samuel 3, verses 3 and 4, the lamp of God had almost gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Now what did he say? What did he say? Here I am. Here I am. At first, he thought it was Eli calling him, but finally, he realizes that it is the Lord that is speaking to him. Praise the name of Jesus. Here I am. Here I am. And we know that, that Samuel, a mighty prophet of God, was used by God for years in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Then if we go to Matthew 3, 16 and 17, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God. Oh, wait a minute. Hallelujah. Let me stop right here. There are, there are some of you that the Lord is speaking to you right now and he is revealing uh, who you are right now. He is confirming who you are right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you are pastoring, but you don't need to be pastoring uh, because the Lord has put an evangelistic spirit in you and that's who you are and you are to go forth just like Paul said to Timothy do the work of an evangelist in the name of Jesus some of you uh, you've been um, 
you've been teaching, uh, but but the Lord is is wanting to to use you prophetically. He's wanting to bring forth that prophetic anointing out of you in the name of Jesus. Hear from the Spirit of God today. Matthew six sixteen through seventeen. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down as a dove. And it lit on him. And then in 17 it says, And a voice from heaven said, This is my son. I'm talking about the revelation of who you are. It is a process. He's still working on me. He's still working on you. Hallelujah. To make us what he, what he wants us to be. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This is my beloved son in whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then if we go to Acts chapter 9 verse 15. I'm still on point number 1. And that is hearing the voice of the Lord. Because it is so very important for you to fulfill your purpose. In Jesus name. Acts chapter 9 verse 15. This is about Paul. <coughs> but the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man, now, this is God's voice speaking. This man, he's revealing, is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Right there. He says, Ananias, go and speak this to Paul. And so sometimes the voice of the Lord goes through another individual. It may come to you through another individual. But he said, this man is my chosen instrument. And we know that Paul was used mightily by, by God. So number two, the second point about revealing who you are in Christ Jesus is... In the word of God. In Psalms 40 verse 7. It says. Then I said. Here I am. I have come. It is written about me. In the scroll. Or it is written about me. Did you know that you are. In the, the word of God. Oh hallelujah. That they the, the word of God. Has written something about you. Praise God. You know at age 9. I saw this scripture in Mark 16, 15. And he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And there was, there was an explosion on the inside of me. This was age nine. Right after I had accepted the Lord as my Savior. This, I was reading my Bible and this scripture literally went into my spirit man. But see, it was already in the heart of God. And, and from that point, there were times that uh, every revival, uh, my, my heart would just overflow and, and be so joyful when people accepted the Lord as their, as their Savior. Oh, hallelujah. And then there was a, an organization in the church where, where we were going, uh, a women's organization. Uh, and it was the, woman's, uh, the women's missionary organization. And there would be visiting missionaries that would come and speak to the group of women. And my mother would, would take me. Uh, to those meetings. And when those missionaries came, I would sit there and cry. I would sit there and cry. Why? Because there was something on the inside of me, an unction from the Holy Spirit, that that's who I was. That I was to go into all of the earth and preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can find yourself, ask the Lord, 
Find yourself. All who seek, find. So seek it. Say, Lord, show me in the word of God who I am. All right, let's go to another scripture. Acts 1.8. This also jumped out off the page. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. I knew I was to be his witness. I knew that I was to experience and encounter and fellowship with the Lord so that I could tell others about his goodness, about his greatness, about his majesty. And then, if we go to Judges 4.4, this is this was very plain and very um, clear to me as I was reading the whole book of Judges. In this chapter, in, in verse 4, it says, Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. Now she was a warring prophetess. You will find yourself in the word of God. If you seek, you will find. And he will show you very clearly and very plainly your purpose and your destiny and who you are in Christ Jesus. What part do you have to are you to function in the body of Christ? So I knew from that that I was a warring prophetess. That the Lord had made me a witness. The Lord had told me to go into all the world. Not just here locally, but into all of the world. Oh, hallelujah. He said that I was written uh, about in his word. And then let's go to the third area. And that is being led by the Spirit of God. You see, once you come out of the world... into the supernatural realm of being a believer, then you're not led by the world anymore. You're not led by, by other people anymore, but you're led by the Spirit of God. And it says in Romans 8, 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And the Father would say unto you today, listen, listen, for I will speak to you clearly, and I will speak to you plainly, and I will bring about my will into your life. I will shalalabida. I will say unto you, go, and you will go, and I will say unto you, stay, and you will stay. For I am the Lord God Almighty who speaks to you in In the fire, I will speak to you. With my mighty voice, it will penetrate your whole being. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that word. Thank you, Lord. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. This is your your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to this world, the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove and test the will of God, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what the Spirit of the Lord, he brings you truth about yourself. He brings you the truth about the Word of God. He brings you the truth in every situation. That is His job. Hallelujah. And inside of you is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so inside of you, you have the voice. Woo! Hallelujah! And it will reveal to you what you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. If we're led by the Spirit of God, He will lead us where He wants us to go. 
are you willing to be led or do you want to be the leader? There are some people, they want their, their own agenda. They want to have their own agenda. But let me ask you this. If you really want to know who you are in Christ Jesus, then you are willing to lay down your agenda. You're willing to lay down your schedule. You're willing to lay down those fleshly thoughts. And you're going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say unto you. In 1 John 2, 20, it says that we have an unction, but you have an anointing or an unction from the Holy Spirit, and all of you will know the truth. Hallelujah. So inside of you, like I said, just like in Mark 16, when I was only nine years old, there was such a confirmation in me of what he wanted me to do. And it took a long time, a long time before things began to, to happen in my life. And it's still moving, praise God. Like I said, he's still working on me. He's still working on you. So don't give up. Don't give up and don't give in. Hallelujah. For he wants to use you. He wants to, to bring you forth into your fullness. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to move in my fullness. The fullness of who I am. Don't you want to do that? Hallelujah. There's some of you, and there are, yeah, I see the tears. You're crying. The Lord wants to say to you that, yes, he wants to use you. Yes, you have purpose and destiny. Yes, he wants to show you who you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear his voice today. Find out who you are in the word. Hallelujah. And be led by the Spirit of God. And you will move in the supernatural realm. And those things that were impossible to you become possible. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, right now I pray for every individual that is watching this video or listening to this video. Lord, that you will speak to them about who they are in Christ Jesus, that you will show them in the Word of God, that you will give them assignments and, 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 and jobs to do for you in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And that they will be led by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. I speak that over you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive the authority that he's given you. Receive the power that he's given you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I just uh, ask you to heal and set free those all over the world that are in bondage today. Lord, those uh, that are in bondage to religious uh, cultures and religious uh, traditions of men, uh, Lord, that you will set them free all over the world in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for those that are in uh, the, the areas of war, uh, Lord, that that they've had loved ones that they've, they've lost. Uh, in Jesus' name, bring comfort and hope uh, to those in, in, in countries uh, that are warring right now. In Jesus' name, thank you for showing us who we are. Thank you, Lord, revealing who we are in Jesus. Amen. Thank you for viewing.